The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter diamond and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into advice GPT, doesn't that sound exciting, is a returning guest from iComply. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Anthony Lyon. Woo! Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter. Great to be back. I know. Look, you actually joined us on, I think it was episode 19. Here we are. I think it's episode 65. So it's about a year ago. Wow. Well done, you, <laughs> for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> We're surviving. Exactly, exactly. By the skin of our teeth, folks. <laughs> um, but <laughs> you might remember before we sort of dove into all the nitty gritty, we did uh, you know, ask you a couple of questions to get you get to know you better as a user of tech. Now, we couldn't possibly ask you the same questions. That'd just be dull. So we have come up with a couple of new ones, which the first one of which is so ironic, given we've got you here today to chat about Advice GPT. Our first question is, you know, if someone came to you, a genie, a little AI genie and said, hey, I will build you any AI buddy you like to make your life easier, you know, and wave my magic wand, what would you wish you never had to do again? What would you get them to build you? Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I think from an advice perspective, and, and you know the advice, the complexities of the advice industry, mm-hmm. there are so many different options <laughs> that you would. Uh, it, it's sort of it's going. Do I do I get three wishes or only yeah. one? You know which one? Which one am I going to pick? Yeah. Like always, I think I'd like to start at the complex end rather than the simple end. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that would probably be advice production. So getting that, you know, getting the power planner's job down from. You know, we're talking, sometimes we talk about 15, 16, 17 hours for an SOA. So th- there's something that needs to change there. Uh, hint, hint to the QAR and what's going on there. <laughs> yes. That would definitely be one. But yeah. another one is um, reviewing advice. Mm. So compliance reviews on advice. And, mm. and that's something that uh, I may am actually playing around with. So I'm trying to be my own genie. Okay. Um, and and playing around with uh, SOA reviews, um, mm. again, that's it's got its own complexities, but it's an interesting project. Well, and it would be too now that, I, and we're diving in a bit, but um, because it's a static thing, so because you have something you're looking at that is either documentation or whatever it is, and then it's about the rules that, that you apply, I guess, like how do you review and what are the rules, then there would be a lot of logic that somebody that does that job in person applies, right? So it does make sense that it should be, should be possible with AI. It's just about how and how do you make sure it catches everything and all that sort of stuff. Um, yes, correct. And there's there's probably the the complexities of the document sizes that we have at the moment, right? right? So we can get SIs that are a hundred pages, <laughs> and yeah. when we're talking about uh, AI and what we call you know prompt sizes and how much we can actually get into the prompts, yeah, we can't get a hundred page document. Right. Plus file notes and all those sorts of things yeah. into a prompt for an AI to look at all at once. Yeah, so that's fine. There's, there's, there's just that just means that there's other ways that we need to extract the data and 
put it into a database to then be, allow the AI to be able to look at the document as a whole. Yep. Rather than trying to jam it all into one one big prompt for the AI to to look at, and and so when sort of t- again, whether we want to get into deep dives now, but it's <laughs> um, but for for people listening, a, a prompt thinking of a prompt like um, when you're in a chat GPT mm. and you might put all your your question put your question into the to the AI to answer. And yep. So, you know, it, it's giving a whole. Can we get the whole whole entire SOA into one question? For the AI, and so that that's sort of a, a limitation or a yeah a challenge that we were sort of that you need to solve of of getting the AI to be able to look at the entire context of the advice document. To that end, I'm going to save my second question to the end. I reckon because this is a great little segue into what we're going to be here to talk about anyway. Because before we Very talk, good. yeah, before we talk specifically advice GPT and Finlay which it's called, which I love, and there's a cute little character. But we'll get to that in a second. I do think because you've done this exercise, and like you're saying, you're sort of describing context, there'd be lots of people listening that don't quite understand what we mean by that. And so, you know, when people have have played with chat GPT, often, you know, it's Mm. a single sentence or something, you know, so they'll put in something and then they'll get an output. Um, And what I've realised, I mean, I'm now at the point where I've given it my um, brand voice, my niche market, my style, the, like I've given it all sorts of things and then I give it very detailed requests. So my prompt, even given yes. all that other stuff, is a very detailed request and the outputs are unbelievable, right? And mm-hmm. I think the analogy there is, you know, when you go anywhere to investigate anything, you, I mean, you could be buying a car. If you said, oh, what's the best car? It will depend on the lot you walk on <laughs> and the car sales yeah, you get. Correct. And the and I think which we're not acknowledging that, you know, human beings would give us weird answers if we asked a single sentence without context. So, of course, chat GP, GPT does the same thing, you know. So, I think right. that's so that's right. part of what you're talking about there, isn't it, is how do we give it enough, whatever the tool is, enough context such that it's positioned right, you know, it's 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 got a starting point. Is that is that sort of what you mean by that? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's it's how much information, and like as you're sort of saying, con- context context in the in a sort of a technical term of of AI is basically information, right? Yeah. And so, how much information can we put into that little? If we're using the Chat GPT, yeah, how much information can we get into that input uh, to then get the response? Um, beyond that, we start moving into um, you know prompt engineering, which is more around how we ask the question right. and how we structure the question yep. for the AI to then be able to answer. Yeah. And that's um, anybody who's, uh, you know, for the prompts, anybody who's ever had to brief a graphic designer uh, and been stunned at the first round of things they get back will understand how important the brief is. Uh, and it's yes. not because they're a bad designer. It's because we're bad at briefing. All right. And similarly, actually, even a simpler example, it's in our industry, you know, uh, briefing a power planner. If you don't brief exactly. them well- you're going to get back uh, something that doesn't satisfy the requirements as as an SOA. Yeah, exactly right. It's the same challenge, isn't it? So I think you know when we diss on on technology in this way and what it's producing, it's like well, humans would produce the same thing if we gave it the same crappy brief. Yeah, for yep. sure. Okay, no, I totally agree. Okay, so I just thought it's worth it's worth sort of capturing that so that people understand. Look. Um, the journey I think you've gone on uh, with Advice GPT and Finlay. Uh, so I'm curious, what possessed you, young man, to go down the path <laughs> of playing with uh, these sort of systems and advice? Like what what was it just you had too much time in your hands or what prompted this? Look, I, I use LinkedIn quite a lot. Yep. You know, I po- post on LinkedIn quite a lot um, and I was playing around doing the sort of Simple discoveries that other people were doing inside ChatGPT. Yep. Right? We were we were sort of putting in an advice scenario and then asking in ChatGPT to make a recommendation. Mm-hmm. And what 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 would you, you know? What is the recommendation for this particular client? And the responses were quite good. Yep. You know, if there was a lot of people were blown away and thinking, "No, this is this is pretty powerful stuff." Right. So then I just thought, well, I'll take it one step. I'll take it one step further. Um, I'll take it one step further and and build an app, build an app, a front end skin that could then interact 
outside that chat GPT structure, right? Yep. Because chat GPT is so, you know, chat, chat based input output yep. type response. So I thought, um, I thought this is a cool little project that I would help me to understand how that works. So yep. more of just for, just for me to learn. Yep. Just for me to learn uh, how the AI works, how the AI interacts, you know, what we need to do from a, a, a software development point of view and give other, other people the opportunity to do the same sort of thing, do the same sort of learning and, and, and get that experience. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was it was really just about learning more and 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 sharing with others. Okay, so as it stands, what what function is it trying to fill? So for the for oh, the listener, is it trying to fill the yeah. hey advisor, I'm helping you, or is it trying to fill the hey public, come in here and 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 we we acknowledge that this currently isn't possible in legislation, but that you're playing with this to go hey, what if somebody could go yeah. in and get a a piece of advice via you know some sort of um, GPT uh, app? Yeah, uh, look, being in the advice industry, it's probably more to help the advisor. Yep. Yeah, help help the advisor to help their client. If I could, if I could yeah, do yep. that, both hit both of them in the one at the one time. Yep. Uh, yeah, help help the advisor to help the client. I think um, it's really if we look at the capabilities of what it can do, it's more of a, a client engagement tool. Okay. Then 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 going to be the the holy grail of you know AI powered advice that doesn't need an advisor. I just don't. It, it's not at that. It's not at that level. Yeah. So yeah. it, it's more like, you know, we could send a client a link, they could fill out a fact find and then go that little bit further of to get basic sort of entry level type advice mm-hmm. that maybe we could come back to the advisor and that, that first conversation can be a lot more enriched about, you know, we have a client that's probably educated a little bit more than they would have been than just filling out a fact find and, you know, I'll meet you in two weeks' time. Yeah, okay. So that's interesting. So it's almost like um, it's almost like what it could do is help the – so <laughs> we all love it when, um, you know, you've got a client and they've spoken to another professional, maybe it's an accountant or somebody else, and go, oh, you should do this, this, and this, right, or, or and their advice elements. <laughs> and so what it's sort of doing is is that, hey, what might apply to, apply to me? You know, so the, for the client, hey, what might be the things that I could consider given my position? Um, and it's almost like saying, hey, these are the sort of things you could do. And then the advisor can almost be the one that that draws that out, layers over it all of the emotional and other <laughs> human elements that apply yes, to correct. such a decision and also implement it for them. Is that sort of where you see it? Perhaps, yeah, exactly playing? right. Okay. Exactly right. I mean, yeah. you, you, you hit an important point on the, on the emotional side <laughs> of, of, you know, and that's what advisors do well, right? Yeah. And advice GPT, uh, it's just not going to be able to hit that those sorts of things, especially when you're eyeballing the client face to face. A lot more can come out, um, come out of the client. So yeah, it, it's really it's the I, I would call it sort of the advice one hundred and one advice one hundred and one piece that that might give the client a bit more information to then have a, a better conversation. Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting. So uh, what I, what yeah, this, you know this is a journey we're all going on, and and I think it can be. It can be difficult not to be protective, you know, of what we do, isn't it? It's really hard to sort of let that go and go, sure, let's – I mean, sorry, my nature is such that I'm in, right? I mean, it's like clearly yeah. 65 episodes in talking about tech, I'm clearly in. But I completely yep. understand the protectiveness. But I think what excites me about, you know, projects like this is I would prefer to have a whole lot more of the conversations that are about – behaviors and habits and then emotions and how they're feeling with their family or their aging parents or like all of the dynamics that go on for humans. I would yeah. love to be able to do more of that because potentially something else has, has even really narrowed down the technical or the engineering stuff we might cover, yeah. you know? So you've got another tool. And I think, you know, maybe in our heads we need to start instead of being, you know, talking all about advice, you know, some of it's the behavioral or, you know, behavioral finance stuff and stuff, some of it's engineering. It's just financial engineering, you know, and that can be done with text assistance. Yeah, uh, ab- absolutely. Um, as he, it's he, now that you, you sort of, you, you've, you've pricked my memory as to um, a couple of years ago on the, he was the BBC in the UK, they had uh, the robot will see you now, if you've ever, yep. if you've ever heard of that. And it's, it was like a robot assisted counsellor. 
And when I watched it, I thought I absolutely thought it was ma- amazing. I thought it was something the advice similar to the advice industry could really use um, outside the the nuts and bolts of you know assets and liabilities and and basic advice strategies and more more into the emotional side, right? And and so the people who would come and see the robot mm-hmm. would pl- they would basically plug their iPhone in, wow, and it would extract data out of the iPhone. <laughs> so it knew. It knew search histories, you know, it, it could get bank details and how much are we spending on takeout and what are we, you know, all those sorts of things. So, and from that data, right, it was so enriched with what these people are doing day in and day out and and it was amazing. Mm. And, and it was, look, it wasn't entirely AI powered or, or, or robot powered. There were, there were counsellors sort of sitting behind the robot yeah, that could really guide what was going on. Right. But I sort of... If you took if you took that sort of theme or that you know that side of things, along with the financial side of things, it it could you know potentially be a, a powerful thing that we might we may see in the future. Yeah, and it's certainly um, you know this type of thinking and where all of this is going has absolutely highlighted for me at least that you know we we've all talked about soft skills and you know we don't yeah. do enough training in. It's made it abundantly clear that it's. I think we're going to have to go even further than that. Like I think because um, the strength for us is our humanity when we've got robots, right, Yes. then we need to double yeah. down on that humanity. And that means, yes, there's more counselling skills. There's more, you know, under, you know, being able to, you know, see somebody and see what might, um, you know, triggers or, or pick up nuances or the way they're talking. Like I think we're going to have to become closer to, say, psychologists than we might have before. Um, yeah, definitely. Because that's the humanity, right? That's where it yeah. all sits. So. So I do think it's become, even if it's just to understand motivations and help people, you know, mm. inspire them. I'm, you know, I'm hoping we'll get more public speakers out of the advice industry because, you know, part of our job will be to inspire people to to get them revved up, you know, and excited about money. So, so yeah, I do see it shifting where the skill base will sit. Um, yeah, definitely. Oh, look at the at the end of the day, you know, everybody likes to do business with people, mm. and that the AI and you know where this technology is going to go is really probably more of a back office. You know, your back office is going to change yes, more than anything. Significantly, yeah. Um, the relationships that you have with clients and the need for that is never going to go away. It, it potentially, you know, more of your younger clients that like to research and, and Google and do all those sorts of things on the lounge, there's probably, you know, there'll be a market for that. Sure. There'll be a market for that. But advisors are going to be the ones, you know, you're going to go and see a professional to get a to get professional advice. And have that relation, an ongoing relationship with somebody that tech can never replace. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about then the experience, and I and I'm imagining this is a journey that you're going on. So <laughs> um, uh, let's just talk about users. So how many people have you got sort of signed up to give it a whirl? Oh, that's probably eighty to one hundred. Okay, who have given it a whirl. That, okay, that's and that's a, a variation. Like you say, it's a bit of a journey. That's a variation of I was hassling, you know, family and friends, and say to Give this a crack and, and tell me tell me what you think. Yep. Um, and then advisors, you know, actual advisors in the industry. Yep. And I'm curious because I think part of uh, as much of as I'm mean, keen to actually understand the tool itself, I think it's exciting to also understand the journey you've gone on because I think more of us are going to need to go on. Well, we're not necessarily going to build a, a <laughs> an AI <laughs> tool, but but I do think you know the understanding of the journey you've gone on is really helpful. So, what did you see as more as you you sort of started and you you built something? As people used it, what were there any surprises or realizations or or adjustments you made as you had people start to use the tool? Yes, so I, I saw a, a few things. I found that the so what happens is the user basically logs in, right, and then they they basically you know we get some consent and things to collect the information and so on, right, and yep. and, a few, and warnings to say this is just AI and yep. you know the usual disclosures, right. But I then started to build out a fact find. Right, and so the more information that I could get from a fact find and send that to the AI, mm-hmm. the better results I started to get. Right. So you know, like 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 anything, garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> yeah. But you know, the more I could refine that fact find and 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 get better information from the client, I found mm-hmm. the results the results were better. Um, one other one other finding that I that I did get is in the app. There's a 
I basically got a link to a survey, mm-hmm. right? And I, I really found two two sides of the coin. And I found your your lay user, you know, you just your your re- retail client, your mum and dad right. sort of retail client. Feedback was really good. Feedback was like, okay, that gave Ooh. me some some really good things to think about. Okay. Somebody who doesn't, you know, someone who's not an advice professional, they might have got, you know, one, two, three key takeouts that yep. they thought, okay, oh, hmm, that was actually quite cool. Yeah. The other side was the advice professional. Yep. And and the advice professional feedback was, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do that, it doesn't do that, it doesn't do that, it doesn't do that, right? And, um, and you sort of be like, I could totally understand that. <laughs> I could totally understand that. It is a project. You sure. I take on the, the feedback. And I, yeah. I like it's sort of the, like you said, the, the defensiveness about, you know, w- oh, what, what's this AI going to do and, and right. completely understanding that, right? Yeah. Um, and that's just all perception. I yes. think it's all perception of wh- where our value sits, really. It, is this tool? Is this tool going to be? You know, I'm going to throw my hands in the air and say I've had enough, and you know, my job's gone or something. You yeah. know, yeah. I, of course, you're going to, you know, you're going to get some of that feedback. Yeah. Um, but realistically, that's sort of not what what it's about. No, no, it's not. Um, okay, and so I'm sort of yeah, I'm curious about then. How you how you see it going forward? Like, it, well, here's a blunt question: Do you, do yeah. you actually see it being you know working on this to the point that actually practices were using it, or is this um, is this a bit of fun on the side? Is it like where do you see this going in terms of the tool? Like, you, you've invested a whole lot of energy t- and time at the very yeah. least. So, what's yeah. your intention for it going forward? Well, I, look, it's probably as you say at the moment, it's really just a a bit of fun and a, a bit of play around because. Mm-hmm. Practically under the regulations and seven steps of safe harbour and all the things we've got at the moment, right? Yeah. It can't be used. Yeah. We're, we're looking at if we get to under the QIR and stream three, when we're looking at alt- other alternate providers other than relevant providers, mm-hmm. um, that does sort of open a door that it, it could be used as an engagement tool. Yep. Now, the other unknown is the technology moves so fast. Yeah. It moves so fast that, you know, what it's capable of doing now and, and where it's going to go is, it, you know, it, it could end up anywhere. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. Who knows? It truly is. And and j- to capture that, actually, I've been um, – <laughs> I've actually been playing or sort of watching the whole image generation stuff because, yes. you know, for I love doing social media and everything, but finding images to do – like, oh, my goodness. And, you know, now we need another photo shoot because I've used the same photo 427 times and, like, <laughs> the whole thing's a <laughs> pain in the neck. And, yes. and, and people expect more out of photos now for social, like the same headshot that you've used. For, it's just not the go. And so I was playing with it for that. And what's – even just in the short time I've been doing or watching that, what's interesting is I can now generate images that are basically me – you know, in a astronaut suit in space that look photorealistic. Like it's it went from something that was sort of, gee, that's not even Peter. <laughs> when we first knew it, like, okay, that person has sort of red hair, but that's about it. Yeah. Through to I think some people would struggle to know that wasn't an actual photo. Yeah. You know, wow. so it and that's in a short period of time. So I'm with you here. Like this is this is evolving really quickly. Um mm. and Part of why I'd be keen for advisors to sort of be playing with this too is you were talking about the fact find, right? And there's a whole lot that goes on. You know, we get static information like that from a client. But actually, when we collect a fact find, what we fill in in a form like that data, I mm. reckon's probably only, I don't know, a third of what we actually hear. Like there'll be things that they'll say or tones they'll use. Like even when you ask them about debt, you know, and, oh, how much you get? Oh, we've got this. Like – you know, we've got 800K on the whatever problem. Like, so there's nuances to the fact and the layers of, of either weight or tone or or concern or emotion around it that I wonder whether part of the smarts with some of these AI tools will be how do you draw those things out too? <laughs> you know, yeah. how do you ask them some more questions about how they feel about those things or what their worries are or, you know, like that sort of thing related to this raw data um, yeah, and what correct. it can then do it- with that? It, it could, I mean, it, it could get to the point where, you know, the AI is going to ask the next question. So, you know, you'd, you'd fill out a fact find and then it, it would sort of look at that information and start to, you know, probe and, and challenge and ask those sorts those sorts of questions. Yeah. Um, is it, it's probably, you know, it's not going to get the context of, 
the emotional size and the no this this and that no um, yeah I mean anything's possible anything's possible there yeah it's 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 really interesting so okay so then a practice who so somebody listening is like oh, oh that's pretty cool how like what would you suggest they do with it for example one of my questions was going to be security of information because clearly if yes. somebody's putting in um, their data it, so yes. how does that all work what how does um, advice GPT you know uh, look after people's information that they're putting in. Yeah. Okay. So it's not using what we call the the, the Chat GPT API or the, the AI in the you know the Chat GPT interface it's out in the world. Yep. That's out in the world. <laughs> you basically you, you get your own you through Microsoft through Microsoft Azure. Um, you can get uh your let's call it your own safe AI. Right. right? And so the data that's being entered. It, it's like entering it into your own SharePoint. So, you know, where right, we so say you're not like your own server own that you have. Yeah, so SharePoint. When, yeah, okay. Correct. Okay. So it's ring fenced and it, it's not going back to that large open AI GPT. Right. So the, the data that you're entering is is secure like you, like you would any, any other software tool. Yeah, okay. So given that these – so I guess um, when we talk about – Chat GPT in particular, it's a uh, chat as in it's written as a chat, you know. Yes. And so that's the this, so talk me through actually what the experience is like here for advice GPT and 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 what it needs more of because clearly if it if these things the point of AI over time is actually that it learns whatever it needs to learn whether it's it's providing back you know better better words or or whatever it is so you know what what does it need more of and how does it work through that you know is it a chat inf- interface or is it some other type of interface yeah okay so so just to clarify on the on the question right do you mean how is this app working yes so it's it's not a it's not a a, a chat interface yes but sitting behind it, right, is cool. still is still an AI. Cool. Okay. So just so yeah, that which is important, I think, for listeners. So this isn't something that's almost like the you know when you go to a website and there's a pop up and hey, I can chat with this thing. This is something yes. that's that's living behind the tool, and then it's it's behaving. And so as, you know, for insights for uh, the listener, the Ensemble Community platform, then there's AI that sits behind that that's sort of trying to get sense of themes of what all of us advisors on there are talking about and how can we help. And, you know, it's it's doing similar. It's sort of behind the scenes and it's, you know, looking at everything and then actually, you know, providing solutions or insights. So, okay. Yeah. So then, um, So yes. what's happening here then is, right, the the – the user is going out and filling out their fact find and putting yep. in their goals and they do a, a, a risk profile. Mm-hmm. And then there's a an, a an automated, call it an automated workflow, which which interacts with the AI. Yep. So we basically say, okay, here's all the data that's been collected in the fact find. Give me a summary of this client's situation. See, we'll spit back and say, you know, Anthony and his wife and how much he's earning what the assets and liabilities are and what his risk profile appetite is. So it, it sort of does that automatically in the packet. Yep. The user doesn't really know. We're just, we're just clicking buttons, mm-hmm. but it's sending the data back and forth to the AI. Okay. So then there's a, a again, there's an automated, or prompts are automated in the back end that would then go through and say, okay, well, here's the client's goal. Here's the situation. What advice would you give to satisfy that goal? Right. And so that, that sort of all happens automated in the back end. Yep. And then gets basically that whole advice piece, which the user can read, then gets pushed into a document. Okay. So the user the user downloads a I haven't called it a an, I haven't called it a statement of advice. <laughs> yep. I've just called it a, a strategy paper. Yep. Um and so the user the user's got a strategy paper that they can take away. Okay, cool. So it, I'm assuming. Well, no, I won't assume. It's not doing any detailed calculations or anything. Is it sort of talking in in broad sense of strategies, or how, like how detailed does it get? It, it'll do calculations. So, yep. a, an example being, um, you, you know, I want to pay off my mortgage before I retire, for example, right? right. I want to, and 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 so again, the the calculations are only as good as the the objective that we put in there, or the right. client goal that we put in there, right? Yeah. So we have, we always, you know, the industry we always talk about smart goals and things. But mm-hmm. the more, you know, if I say oh, I want to be debt free in ten years' time, well, then I've got the parameters to be able to make the calculations. Yeah, and, and it'll do the calculations. So it, it would go to the point where saying, 
you're paying, you know, three and a half thousand per month on your current mortgage of six hundred grand, you need to increase that to seven and a half or whatever it may be yep. to achieve your goal of 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 debt free in ten years' time. Okay. So it'll it'll go and it'll actually map those calculations. Again, though, you know, a more generalized objective won't be able to do those no. calculations if we don't have the the you know don't have the data or the the goal to be able to do it. So okay. it'll do that. Okay. Um, okay. It it won't do product. It, it's not going to go and do product, right? It's not going to sure. go and review. It's going to. It doesn't have the data to be able to go and review and a super fund and compare compare and against and, market or whatever. Or- and go and get insurance quotes and go and do a, a calculation with an ice graph and all the, the sort of things that paraplanners would do. It's not about yeah. that. Okay. Okay. So, and it's, I'm assuming therefore, because of what you're saying there and the type of data that's going in, it's probably not also not at the whole scenario level in that it's it's um, playing with the, you know, when you do the financial modeling, a lot of that is actually, you don't necessarily know the inputs up front because you're playing a bit to see what the outcomes might be in the timing. So, so I'm assuming it's not doing that either, aside from things that are really almost linear. Is that a fair description? So linear calculations yes. are really obvious ones. Correct. You know, formulas, basically, where you could write a formula, then sure, Correct. it'll do that. Um, it'll do but, that, yep. But anything that's that's got, you know, um, scenarios or multiple options that really you've got to consider it's not at that point um where it's doing that yeah okay no, cool no cool so like you say then it's it it's very much sitting at that sort of um high level strategy interface isn't it it's sort of highlighting possibilities i guess clarifying really of the the obvious you know, yes. and that's not a bad thing, I think, actually, for advisors because <laughs> often you get clients coming to you where you just think, "Could you just pay off more your mortgage?" Like, like it's it's yes. is that sometimes <laughs> that's the answer they want. Like they literally, well, well, how do I do this faster? You know, and and we yeah. all roll our eyes at that, but lots of people, it's that's not obvious, you know, and and the finance industry really does bum- bamboozle people with complexity. So I can understand why it's not obvious. So for those people to get an immediate, well, gee, you could do this, and that would get you this outcome. That's pretty good, you yeah. know. I like that idea. Um, yeah. So we, we have I have put in a scenario where it's sort of I want to I'm thinking of buying an investment property worth eight hundred grand. You know, is this achievable type thing? And so it will really go and look at the the cash flow. It'll look at the cash flow and see how much that you're able to save. Yep. Um, it'll do some calculations on loan repayments and what rent you might get, and come back and say, you know. It's not. It's not possible for you, and you may have. You know, first you're going to have to go and sort out your budget and and do other things like that. So yeah. it will get to that level. Yep, it will get to that level. Yeah. Okay. So so then, in ter- so they they get this output, which is great. Um, then you know, do you have any? Because this is a this is a somewhat an unusual conversation, isn't it? Because it's, this is not an app you're pitching in the sense of, hey, I, everybody, I want you to pay me fifty dollars a month to yeah. use this tool, right? So, <laughs> so it's a little bit different. Um, so, is there as as we're talking this through, is there an element of it? For example, you'd love somebody to be curious enough to, you know, bring another element to it where they could start building something, you know, another part of it that might add some value. Do you know what I mean? Because of course, all these things are are down to as much our creativity in terms of how we approach them or or yeah. the layers of complexity, isn't it? And sometimes we, you know, we've sort of stretched our brain to the extent we can when you <laughs> dive deep into these projects. So is there any element where you're like, oh, I'd love somebody who's really curious on this piece to come in and start to to add some flavor or anything like that? The, the I think that I mean strategically it does strategically it does quite well as yep. a starting point. Yep. Um, to have a tool where a client could probably go in and compare their super fund and maybe get some insurance quotes and things like that would yep. be pretty nice. Yeah. Um, and I do see that. I do see that happening. Right. Because recently, sort of AI can go and it, it's all where it gets its data from, right? So yes, AI can, for an example, and I'm just sort of contextually here. Um, for example, might be able to go to a product rex, right? And they could go and and if if we had their if we had their if they uploaded their super statement, that the AI could read the super statement, go into a product rex and pick out their um you know pick out their current portfolio, and then maybe go and compare it against another product. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, it, it's probably a way off, but yeah. 
conceptually that that is sort of po- that is sort of possible. That yeah. would be that would be a nice to have. Yeah, look, and I think the other thing that I think could be interesting for for any listeners out there is is if you're considering or already have somebody in there, you know, either a student, like you've brought on somebody who's studying financial planning or or mm. is professional year, it it would be such a I think a really good learning process for them to be pushing information into something like this to see what comes out as almost like providing some initial guardrails for where they should at least start. Do you know what I mean? Because often yeah, yeah. when you yeah. start in this industry, it's like, wow, there's a lot of strategies to consider. You know, like, <laughs> okay, well, I'll apply all of those. Well, you don't have to apply all of them because a whole lot of them don't apply to, to yeah. certain types of clients. So I wonder whether it could be a tool that could take somebody on a journey when they're new uh, to the industry. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, yeah, correct. I, I think that's the, another – it's kind of getting getting perspective too of what – What's the tool actually trying to do? Right. And sometimes I find that you know you have these brand explosions of what what could be possible, and you know do we build this and we build build that? Yeah. And then I sort of come back and go, well, no, really, that the the client isn't that's isn't necessarily that sophisticated, and, no. and if and if and if they are, let's leave it to the professional, right? So let, yeah. like, let, let's let the advisor do what he he or she does best. Yeah. Um. And so, really, the tool let's not overcomplicate it, and just let it let it do what it does to engage the client and get a bit more information. Yeah. Um, maybe it could direct it to some more education around understanding these right. strategies and and researching and saying, well, you know, um, it recommended salary sacrifice. Well, here's a little nice little video on what salary sacrifice is, for yep. example, right? Yeah. Um, and 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 don't yeah don't overcomplicate it too much because. Either the client's probably going to want to do some initial research, and you know, it, it may be something that's a tire kicker that they just, you know, they, they they got what they wanted to get, yeah, and they go away, yeah. Um, or it's, you know, here's your initial advice, and here's here's an advisor that you can talk to that can review this strategy and and give you proper professional advice, yeah. Um, let's keep it simple, yeah, yeah, and and it, I th- I think that's such an interesting concept because. For starters, I mean, we all talk about, um, you know, robo advice, which I guess, I mean, it's sort of what we're talking about here, right? <laughs> Except in reality, robo advice to date has been investment advice. It hasn't actually right. been full advice. So, yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's probably been around asset allocation yeah. and, and, yeah. and sort of pushing very narrow <laughs> ETF portfolios exactly. and so on. Correct. Exactly. So, right. it hasn't really been robo advice. Um, but, no. In any in any um, expertise or, or or offering or anything that anybody out there has ever you know put together, there is I, and I'm pretty sure the figures people find is like less than one percent of the population actually want to DIY. Like they want to find out info, and they they might even dive down. Like they might even buy programs, and they'll even I mean I do that too, right? And I'll learn about this and I'll learn about that, but then I pay a professional to do it. It's just that my process is I want to know enough to be dangerous. Exactly. Right. Yes. So, yeah. So I wonder whether actually we need to start looking at it like that instead of being almost secretive with these insights. You know, almost no, no, you've got to come to the experts to find out about this <laughs> yeah. stuff. Um, instead of that, it's sure. You know, he, you know, have you know, go through this process, get some understanding, but then when you're ready to act, that's what yes. we're about. Right, we're about action, you know, and advisors help people act and actually change um, going forward. Because we all know, I mean, we all know how to get healthy, right? Mm, but mm. Pe- you know, personal trainers. There's more personal trainers in this country than there are advisors, <laughs> right? Probably, probably by a long way too. Uh, uh, yeah, nearly double, I think. Um, is it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so you know, that's about well, people need help to act. Yeah. So you know, we all know what they're going to tell us. You yeah. Know? So so I think maybe we do need to shift our thinking a little so that tools like yeah. this can help people get on that journey, give them a bit of empowerment, feel like they are a bit on top of it so that then they choose the person that they partner with to act, yeah. um, which I think I think that's actually quite exciting. Mm. Um, and and also would let the advisor, like you say, I mean, tire kickers, it, that's only going to increase. I mean, like the demand is much more than the supply. Mm. So we're all going to need actually ways to help people that sort of have those queries but aren't ready to actually get advice. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's there's probably less to fear than we think. Uh, uh, and now, now that you say it, so 
in in the actual app is um, once they actually go through filling out the fact finder and they get their initial advice piece and they download their advice, they can then go and chat directly to the AI. Right. And so it's the interface of that is you know what you'd expect from a, a chat GPT type structure of a yep. you know putting your question and get your answer. Yep. Um, and it's actually got the context because we've gone through that fact find. When they ask a question, it's got the context or the understanding of the client's current situation. Right. So it can answer and do the calculations back yep. to the client there. Right. So yep. you can probably um, for your you know you would get a bit more information from the client by knowing the question the types of questions that they're asked and it's going to be a lot more tailored as to to what to what the client's circumstances are yep um so we can go a little you know we could probably go a little bit further down from just the nuts and bolts yes um but that as you say that that might be a good way to let the tire kicker kick the tires for a bit um and and then Trying to, I don't, I don't really like the word to describe as a, as a, as a funnel because it's not really you know, necessarily sure. about trying to funnel people in. But sure, um, you know, but we, they, we can, they can then go and if, seek the advice. They can right. go and seek the advice if and when they're ready to do so. Yeah, and and it it is something that probably um, we've never really. Sorry, that's not fair. There are people in our industry who've done this spectacularly well and are growing at the rate of knots. Um, but the most of the industry historically, actually, that whole you know, consumer journey, much of which which is well before they actually buy, you know. So for anything, there's a massive journey for people. Very few practices, understandably, but very few practices have ever been able to design something like that, you know, or or taken the time to do that. And I think this feels like to me one of those tools. It's Mm. one of those things in the journey that will help get get people further along in their transformation, right? And we all have steps we're going to have to take when we transform for anything. Um, And so I think, you know, if we can view it that way, and it is sort of a funnel, I guess, but really it's about the individual's transformation and what do they need at each stage. And the truth is most people, if you pull them off the street, are not ready to get detailed advice in that moment, right? There's a journey to get that, you know, just like – if you're getting serious medical assistance from, you know, a, a specialist, a specialist surgeon, like there's a journey you go through for that. And it's not just because of the horrible, you know, medical structure and how complicated it is. It's also because our brains need to process these things, right? So you've got to step yeah. here and then we scan this and then we test that and then we and then you, you know, like, like there's a journey. Um, and so I think that's an exciting, like if we can maybe think about, you know, some of these tools fitting in that journey, where does it fit? Then it may take some of the fear out of it as well, I think. Yeah. The the, the whole producing, uh, like when we're talking about, you know, the products and what do we sort of do after that, to me that could be a bit of a different tool around how yeah. the advice practice produces the advice and where yeah. do we get our data from and how we do that more efficiently. That's probably a bit of a, a separate project than this, you know, thinly a yep. client engagement project, and, and yep. you can sort of start to get into the trying to thinking of oh, mer- <laughs> the, the difference between the two. Yep. Yes, and I do think, uh, and you you use the word project there, which I think is really interesting. So we talk about producing a plan for a client, but. In reality, what we produce in advice is very rarely what anybody else would call a plan. So normally a project (laughs) plan has, you know, many milestones, all sorts of parallel things going on. It has decision-making points. It has like it's it's – it's very much a journey in that sense. Um, And so Mm. I wonder whether actually things like this could mean that's more where we head to. You know, we are a facilitator – you know, we're a project. You didn't know I mean like I think it could be interesting to then be the ones that are seen as we're going to help you get this done, right? Yeah. We're, the, we're the project manager for you. Um, yeah. We're going to lay out a plan and the plan is, sure, there's going to be some technical stuff in there, but it's, how, how do we pull this off? Like, yeah. How are you going to get this done? Um, and so that that is that that could be where it evolves to. Um, yeah, I think you, you could be right in that um, I think what you're sort of saying there is, that that advice GPT or whatever the project ended up being became a client portal as such. 
Maybe. And, and so the client would upload, you know, he's uploading the documents. They'd have a bunch of tasks and things and, you know, that they could do as part of their their plan or project that, that would help them interact with the advisor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, yeah, well, I mean, who knows? Who knows? So is there, <laughs> now that you've, <laughs> you've gone down this path and, and kudos for surviving thus far <laughs> um, and, and, and um, making it this far on the journey, is there, are you sort of like, okay, well, I need a breather. I'm so glad Christmas is coming. You know, I need to not play with this thing. Or have you got some things on the horizon where you're starting to see it's like opened your eyes to the potential of AI and other places that might apply? Are there other sort of things that you you then want to work on because of it? Yeah. Um, so I haven't actively updated Finley for a while. I feel like yep. I haven't actually gone and played around with it. Yep. Just because I, I know that the limitations on practically what we can do with it Yep. Under the current regulations. So yep. I sort of felt like I've I've reached a point where there's really not there's really not much more I can do with it until we sort of know what the future looks like. Yeah. So yep. I've parked that. Yeah, fair enough. I have um I have then started to take some of those learnings and then put them into other other areas of I compliant. Yep. Um and so it, that that sort of, you know, looking to review the advice and 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 playing around with, I've sort of got my my second uh, avatar, uh, Avana, who, mm-hmm. who looks to so Avana basically looks to to review the the SOA and produce a, a compliance review report. So I'm yeah. playing around with, with that one at the moment. And the other one is looking at having a Finley in the advice production process, where an advisor could upload their file notes, and then it would go into the wizard. This is where I sort of see power planning going. You, an advisor could upload their meeting notes and file notes and things like that into Finley, and it would start to pre-fill out the advice production wizard. Yeah. So just yeah. Be, instead of a power planner having to then sit down, read the file notes from the advisor, read the strategy notes, then go and have to extract, you know, what the client objectives are and what the scope of advice is and are there any limitations and all those yep. sorts of things, right, the AI could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I'm, and I know that there's certain tools out in the market that are sort of already doing this in part, but I do think you know, it's not like strategies are going to get simpler. <laughs> you know, the retirement income covenant, all sorts of things keep on coming out where it's like, oh, good, another one. Yay. Yeah. You know, so it's not like those things are going to get easier. I do think there's some real power in having something that could, you know, an advisor feeds in, like you said, or a power planner, feeds in file notes fact find. And then, you know, you get a report that says, we've narrowed down the possible strategies for you to consider to this, you know? So, yeah. and this is why. Add that now, one, I still add think, that one, add that one. Right, exactly. So, it's still, it's probably still needs to say why. So, because I think, you know, that tests what you put in because, of course, you said shit in, shit out. And that happens all the time. I see it all yeah. the time in modeling. People are like, oh, no, that's what the model said. And when you take a deep dive, you know, with my actuarial background, I'm like, that number looks hinky. Look further <laughs> down and you can see that it's, you know, mate, it's it's got sort of some, an exponential growth factor in there that's just made, made the thing go nuts. So, yeah. you always need that sort of ability to check the logic in almost. You know, this is why it's rejected these strategies. But I do think – you know, for everybody to um, ensure the rigor, you know, I think even something as simple as that could be so powerful um, yeah. for advisors to give all of us confidence, you know, and go, okay, right. Now, some of them you'll go, well, you know, either that doesn't apply because of what the client said they want to work on or like all sorts of things, but it would just ensure almost that it's gone, you know, yep, no, yep, no, yep, no, through all sorts yeah, of possible correct, things. correct. And really at the end of the day, like, and, and you're spot on, um, the AI and all these things are really just a tool. It's an assistance tool. It's it's not like uh, it still is, you know, rubbish in, rubbish out. Yep. Um, I sort of think envision that you know, if an if everybody on the if everybody on the boat or everybody on the ship sort of knows how to use the tool together and maximize the tool. And an example of that might be that uh, advisor might like to record a file note. Right? Instead mm-hmm. of sitting there and, and filling out the SOA wizard, they would have their prompts to, to say the client's objectives are yep. A, B, C, D, whatever. And the strategies I'm recommending are A, B, C, D. Yep. The AI is going to do that and, and that's going to save a bucket load of time for a power planner because they're then having to read that, manually enter it into the SOA wizard and so on. Right, But if the advisor can actually understand how the whole process works, 
and get a lot of efficiencies in verbalizing, okay, instead of writing that, right, verbalizing this into a file note that the AI can just read. And yeah. it is it is so simple for the AI to go, oh, yeah, yeah. the objectives are under the objectives heading and they recommend and write, and, and then yeah. automatically pull that into a, an SOA wizard for a paraplanner. Yeah. That would save that would save a lot of time. Yeah. Um, but we sort of just we've got to get everybody on the same, you know, it's almost like the practice manager needs to be orchestrating and getting everybody onto the doing their little bits in the in, in the process. Yes. Uh, on the on the conveyor belt. Um and, and you can you could get a lot of efficiencies out of doing that. Yeah. Um with a tool like AI. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And in all the different facets. Um, now, I feel like given you've mentioned, mentioned two tools that each have have um, particularly, well, I think really cool names. I've got to ask, how are you coming up with the name? You said, was it Ivana? <laughs> was the other one? Where are the names coming from? Yeah. Um, Ivana, uh, that's the Intelligent Virtual Advice Network Assistant. <laughs> well, you know what? The shortened name rarely sounds more interesting than the long one. You've done well, I think. That's it sounds like a real person. That's fantastic. So, I yeah, love yeah. it. Avana Avana, I again a, a sort of I'd like to see Avana to be, you know, a a virtual compliance assistant. Again, I, it's always like, yeah, their assistants. When, when yeah. Chad GPT came out with uh, recently with their assistance API and their assistance bots. And and it's, you know, they are only assistants. They're not going to be Compliance managers, and they're not going to be power planners, and they're not yep. going to, you know, go to that level. It's yep. they are really just assistants. Yeah, um, and it, and it's sort of understanding that, that that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you just uh, how I come up with the names, couldn't tell you. Just <laughs> genius, just natural genius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. It's fantastic. Well, I feel like is there anything else you wanted to cover off? Is there anything we've missed? No, I think we've we've covered it all off. Yeah, good. definitely. Um, good, good, good. I, it, it, it just, I just feel like you know we're at the we're we're at this cornerstone of of the legislation and advice changing. You know the the regulations. Think, yep. you know, again, fingers crossed. Hopefully, by the time this, uh, everybody's listening to this, we we know what SOAs are going to look like and so on. Yeah. Um, and technology is just going to get better. Yeah, hundred percent. Which brings me all the way back to the beginning and the second question about your use of technology. I feel like this is the perfect time before we wrap up the episode. Not all all tech is good tech, right? And sometimes the analog version of things, actually many of us feel is better. As an example, I have a real, real watch, you know, like a heavy weighted watch with just the dial. You know, I don't have this thing living on my wrist that beeps at me in terms of reminding me or emails. That's my version of analog. Yeah. What would be yours? What would be something analog you prefer over the technology that might get involved? I think it has uh, got nothing to do with tech yep. and everything to do with sport. Nice. Um, and we, we've seen the evolution of the uh, in the NRL, they call it the bunker and the, you know, the video review of, of sport. Yep. And it's just got... It's got out of hand. Uh, there's something a lot to be said for the referee makes the decision on what he saw at the day, and sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong, and that's that's sort of the beauty of sport. That's right. That's what the sport drama. was about. The drama of sport. Yeah, it's just it's over engineered. It is yeah. really over engineered at the moment, and yeah. th- it's becoming like the NFL, where you know we're pausing every few minutes to watch another video review and 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 all the rest. Um, Let's make the decision and move on. I hundred percent agree. It. Um. I actually heard somebody describe it as, as you know, a sport of any type. And anybody who watched, you know, the Matilda's journey, say in the in the World Cup, and how how emotional that got for people who'd never watched soccer in their life, mm. right? <laughs> then you know, then soccer is very much the hero's journey. Imagine if during the hero's journey or during a movie, you know, they kept on stopping to check the accuracy of what that character said, or they kept on stopping to like, that's not how these storytelling experiences work, right? We get yeah. taken on the ride and sometimes the ride's great and sometimes it's not, but you know, that's the, that's the thrill of it and that's the value in it. And so I'm right there with you with sport. I think I get that what happens is some of the accuracy they're looking for is because of the money involved. That's yeah. the problem here. That's really where it's coming from, mm-hmm. right, is that, you know, there's so much money involved. But it's actually entertainment and storytelling. And I agree. I think the human element, you know, taking out the human element of it I think is a shame. 
You yeah. know, I don't want them to mess up all the time. Don't get me wrong. We all want, you know, as a as an avid uh, uh, St. George Illawarra fan, <laughs> tough as it's been, um, you know, I want them to get it right. You know, I want the Dragons to get the right call, but – Stopping and starting, and that, that's not what I'm there for. No, you know that's not what I'm there for at all. I mean, before we hit record, you know, I was waxing lyrical about that about the days of Harrigan as a ref in the NRL, and and what I loved about that is actually he was a character in the game too. That's yeah. actually what ended up having yeah. happening. You know, he was part of this story, and I think we've diminished the refs actually over time. The tech has sort of treated them as, as less than human. Yes, um, yeah. which is a shame. Which is a shame. Hopefully we don't get AI uh, refereeing sport. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, oh, oh, you see, now you've put the fear of everybody. They were fine with AI and advice, but now we're going to get inundated with people waving their arms, having never occurred to them that AI may get involved in sport. They're all going to be up in arms after that comment. Oh, well done. Look, all right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to actually find out more about Advice GPT, then the website link is in the episode show notes. Um, you'll see that the link is with iComply, which is, of course, um, the big project uh, or the big uh, app, app and tool that Anthony spends his time on, um, along with his LinkedIn details, should you want to reach out. Um, thank you so much for sharing your journey and what you've been working on. Uh, I think Finlay sounds like a great experience for everybody to sort of get a feel for what's possible right now and, you know, see over time what these tools can give us and, you know, potentially how much time they can give us back so we can spend more time chatting to clients. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me on and it's great to chat all things advice and tech again. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm curious if you're listening and actually have registered um, to use or to try out Advice GPT or Finley. Um, you know, what were your initial impressions? What did you think of using the tools? Um, the tool, because I'd really love to hear your view. This is something that would be a great conversation for us to have on the Ensemble community platform um, and to really just talk about the experience. And for that reason, actually, you know, in terms of my thoughts for this episode, and as you know, we normally then dive into a Curiosity Corner app. I'm going to combine those two things today because actually to help us build, you know, our curiosity and really sort of flex that muscle, I think it would be a great idea to actually register for the tool and go in and actually put in some detailed, like a detailed fact find um, of information. Of course, you can, you know, make up a name. It doesn't have to be, you know, a client's name or your name or whatever, but, but really fill it in and see what comes out because what Anthony's done here is he's taken, you know, put his toe in the water. He's bothered to take the time to understand AI and what it can do. And all of us just getting that insight, just seeing, ooh, what is possible for somebody that isn't, you know, a, a uh, IT super uber geek, right? Uh, Anthony's in the wider advice community then. I think there's, um, you know, we can all go on that journey. He's sort of gone a bit ahead of us, but we can really learn from that. So I think just going through and seeing what the output is and thinking about the inputs and therefore, you know, AI in the middle and then the output. And you may, you know, it may view it's not perfect. You may think, gee, you know, it, it needs to do this or this or this. But sit back from it and look at it more as, well, you know, where's that at? And what does that make me think might be possible with AI? What is that, you know, what is it, you know, really flag for you? I've got to say for me, I think a wonderful use of AI that could be something that could be utilized across the industry is a, like a master strategy list, you know, something that really is, these are all the possible things. One can, you know, the tricks and the, the, the tips and the different techniques and all the different things could apply to any potential client you put in a, a particular client's profile and it narrows down the potential strategy list for you, maybe even highlights any overlaps or challenges or sort of it's those guardrails for the possible strategies. Now, why am I saying that? Well, because A, I think we, you know, we can all become out constantly evolving our skills, constantly learning. But if we, you know, we've basically halved the number of advisors in the country, we are going to have to increase that number to be able to serve the public. We're going to need tools that can help get people, you know, through that exper experience journey as new, brand new advisors, as trainees, faster than ever before. And 
part of that is going to be helping them discern what might apply, what sort of things could be utilized for this client. So any tools that narrow that down, that might point them then, they can go off and do the digging, they can go off and do the analysis, all that sort of thing. It's not telling them the answer. What it's do is doing is narrowing it down. I think it also could be a potentially strong compliance um, tool because it could then highlight why it included those things and why it didn't include others. You know, So I think there's some, t- to me, that's what stood out as the type of thing that could have input one end, output the other, and AI does some trickery in the middle. Um, what's yours? You know, when you think about it, go and play with Finley, um, go and have a look and think, oh, well, hold on, this might be a good idea. And please, I'd love for you to share that on the Ensemble community platform. Please tag me. I know there'll be others that are curious because the more we sort of talk about these things, then there'll be a person just like Anthony who'll go, you know what, I reckon I could do that. I'm going to go and check out AI and see what I can do with it. So, um, this is a this is your your curiosity experience for this week, folks. I'd love you to give it a try, and even if you don't want to go into Finley or try Advice GPT, I'd love you to ponder that. What is the thing that just was a, a specific individual thing? It doesn't. I, I'd in fact cut, encourage you not to make it too complex. Think about a specific thing that you think AI could really do and then share it on the platform. Um, I'll look forward to seeing those because I really love to hear what you have to say. But uh, that's all we've got for this week, folks. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. Uh, Now, you know, if this sort of got you a bit revved up about AI and you're really ready to strategically adopt AI tech, putting clients at the center of that journey, making sure that you hold on to that foundational view with the clients at the center and really future-proof your advice practice in this, hey, AI augmented world, then uh, be sure to uh, look out for my new keynote for 2024. This is about AI-ready advice, you know, thriving in the era of artificial intelligence. And, you know, this, these are about some tips and tricks to succeed in the age of AI. And, you know, lots of that is about how we set up our practices now, what we can do about the, you know, without AI yet, what can we do about this or set things up and processes and procedures, all sorts of things we can do to really shore up our practices so that when that wonderful widget comes along, then you are able to take advantage of it and it doesn't require a complete reboot of your business. So, get ready to really supercharge your tech strategy, you know, and let's take advice to the next level. So if you're curious about that, you want to ask more questions, what on earth are you talking about, Peter? Then please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, That's LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD, P-E-I-T-A-M-D. And we can absolutely have a chat. Otherwise, I will very much look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 